Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Buffalo Cauliflower. Now before we get started on working on our cauliflower and making our buffalo sauce, the very first thing we got to do is get the grill fired up. And today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Classic 3. We're going to build a nice big hot fire because we're going to do some high temperature roasting in here today. Alright, so we're going to load it up with the Kamado Joe big block charcoal. We got this filled pretty full today, kind of to the top of the basket. We're leaving a little hole in the front for airflow uh, because the airflow is just so crucial to really getting your temperature up high. I'm gonna nestle in a few starter cubes here, fire them up with the torch. So we'll let the charcoal get lit before we close everything up and really open all the airflow up. And that's when the temperature is gonna start to really rise. We are going to be cooking indirect today, so we're going to set this up with the slow roller system here in a little bit, but we're looking to cook in that 400 to 450 range today. So we're going to let this really get hot while we get prepped up on the cauliflower and the buffalo sauce. All right, now that we got the grill fired up, let's talk a little bit about this recipe. We're going to be roasting off some whole heads of cauliflower that are drenched in our homemade buffalo sauce and smoke roasted back there on the Kamado. When those get nice and tender, we're going to cut them up into florets throw the cast iron onto the grill and just give them a really quick fry so that we crisp the outside. And that way we kind of get the best of every world. We've got the smokiness from the grill, nice and tender, and then they're kissed with that crispiness from the cast iron fry and finished in our homemade buffalo sauce. So we're starting off with that buffalo sauce. This is such an easy sauce to make from scratch and it tastes so good when you do. Now the real key ingredient, of course you need butter, but the hot sauce that you use is all the magic. We're gonna be using the Killer Hogs hot sauce. This stuff is perfect for buffalo. So we're kind of making a double batch today. Uh, two bottles of Killer Hogs hot sauce to two sticks of butter. And then we're gonna add our seasonings. For those seasonings, we're gonna be using a little bit of our Code 3 Spices grunt rub, but we're really using it for the garlic. It's a nice, thick and chunky garlic going on in there, some pepper and salt. We're gonna add a little bit more funkiness to this with some Worcestershire sauce. Up the heat level with the cayenne, and this is really where you can mess with how hot you want your buffalo sauce to be, more or less cayenne. And then a little bit of celery seed there at the end. The celery gives you the umami that really makes you go wow. I mean, it adds that extra something to the sauce. And that the only reason that we need to bring all of this up beyond actually melting the butter is so that those flavors soak into this sauce. We warm it up to make sure that we can taste the celery seed in the end. So once that hits a healthy simmer, we're just gonna turn it down a bit. We'll let that simmer away probably just for a minute, maybe two minutes tops. And then we'll turn the heat off completely and let this start to cool down and thicken up. Now since we're roasting whole heads of cauliflower today, not a lot of trimming work to be done, but for what there is, we're gonna jump into that now, get rid of some of these leaves, kind of trim up the ends of the stems. So I'll just kind of shave off the bottom of the stem here. Now the stem's still good eating, so we're not gonna get rid of it completely. And we'll start to peel off these leaves. But that's really all there is to it. So just like that, we're gonna actually be able to dice up the stems and eat those along with the florets. All right, we let the tent creep up to about 475 on here. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and get the slow roller in position. Uh, they say not to cook over 500 uh, with the slow roller in there. So we wanna make sure before we get to 500, we're gonna shut down the air and really make sure that we stabilize in that 450 range. We get the divide and conquer in place here. And just for a little extra aroma, we're going to throw in a nice big chunk of apple wood. And we'll shut it down with the plate there. And again, just adjust the airflow. You know, we had it wide open, probably going to go about two thirds for now and see where it stabilizes. Maybe halfway for now, we're looking for 450 degrees again. So here's your sauce. It's cooled down a little bit and you see what happens when it cools down is the butter separates out and that's fine. Just a little bit of whisking will bring it back together. And honestly, as this cools even down to like room temperature, that, that separation just doesn't happen as much, but all you gotta do is run a whisk through it. Uh, it's really a, a temporary emulsion uh, that you can fix pretty much at any time. 
not a problem. So the buffalo sauce we are gonna use as a finishing sauce today, but before we even get these on, we're gonna soak our cauliflower with just a little layer of the buffalo sauce on top. Something to brown up nicely on the outside of the cauliflower there. And then the buffalo sauce you can just leave out at room temperature until you're going to serve this, which is probably gonna be here in about an hour to an hour and a half. All right, so we've got the divide and conquer set up on the highest setting to keep us away from the radiant heat coming off the plate there. Put our cauliflower right here in the center. And then we're just gonna wait for these to get tender when probed either with a thermometer or with a skewer. Might as well use, utilize that extra sauce on the pan. Now while we're waiting on our cauliflower to roast off, we're gonna to put together some buttermilk ranch dressing for dipping in. We're gonna start off with a half cup of sour cream. Add to that a half cup of mayonnaise. <laughs> and then we're gonna add one half cup of buttermilk. So this is super simple. These are really easy ingredients. We're not doing anything crazy here. If we wanted to, we could blitz this up and then chop our herbs by hand and mix those in. And we'd kind of have a little bit more chunkier. It, it, there'd be flecks of green everywhere. I like to just throw it all in the blender, make it really easy. And then you get this really cool green ranch dressing to go along with it. So rough chop on some flat leaf parsley. We'll shoot for about a quarter cup once we've got that rough chop. Next, we've got some baby dill. Just need about a tablespoon of that. One tablespoon of chives that I've already chopped. And that kind of does it for the green stuff. So from there, we're gonna add some aromatics. We've got a clove of garlic. Just gonna crush that up and let the blender do the work on it. I want a little bit of lemon juice to brighten things up. So we'll go for about one teaspoon of lemon juice. And then just a dash of Worcestershire. Uh, probably a half teaspoon or so. That's it. So we'll throw that on the Vitamix. Get it running. Again, take this as far as you like. Uh, if we stopped right now, we might have some chunks of garlic in there, but we'd also have a fairly white ranch dressing with some green bits in it. We're going to take it a little bit further. There we go. Start to see it change a little bit. Now guys, I could be totally wrong, but I feel like when we blitz these herbs up, it's like they're just awakened because we busted down all those cells and all that aroma and flavor is allowed to get into the liquid itself. Maybe I'm imagining it, but I'm sticking to my guns. It tastes better this way. Just need to shake a smoked salt. We'll add a little bit of black pepper as well. And that's going to be good. So we'll transfer that to a, to a bowl. You'll see here that it looks really liquidy. That all changes with about 30 minutes in the refrigerator. It thickens up quite a bit. It's been about an hour that our cauliflower has been roasting now. We've got a great crust on the outside and it's getting super tender inside. So come take a look. Wow, look at that. Beautiful crust out there. If we poke on this tender, we start to get some resistance there at the stem, but otherwise these feel just right. So what we're gonna do now is we want to divide these into florets so that we can kind of get a little browning on all sides of the cauliflower. We got this great smoke flavor infused now. We're going to finish this off with a quick pan fry in the skillet. And then this stem here, we can also chop down and we'll fry that up as well. Just some bite-sized pieces here. So it's easiest just to work your way up the stem to the end here and kind of remove these and uh, whatever size florette you like, really. Whatever you can pop into your mouth, I suppose, is a reasonable size. Now the only thing we're going to do to prepare these for frying is we're just going to hit them with a little bit of cornstarch. And this is kind of like when you put some flour on, on the outside of your fried chicken, except on a much lighter level, right? So we're just trying to get Something that gives us the illusion of eating a, a fried piece of cauliflower. So just a dusting on there. Let's toss it around. Lightly coating the cauliflower 
in the cornstarch. We'll do this one more time, but essentially just a couple of tablespoons is going to get all three heads of cauliflower. All right, we're back at the grill now. I've got a 12 inch lodge cast iron skillet that's just been preheating on here. We're still running at 450. We've got our cornstarch on the outside of our cauliflower. We just need a little bit of vegetable oil in here. I'm gonna go with about a quarter cup to start. Just enough to kind of cover the bottom, a very shallow pan fry here. And then we're gonna work in batches here. We don't wanna overcrowd the skillet because we won't get any crispiness on the outside. Typically I go one head of cauliflower at a time. We'll see if we can't get a little bit more than that in there. Oil's already hot. We're looking for bubbles when we go down. We leave a little bit of space to make sure we get that crispiness going. And now I think it's probably safest to go about one head of cauliflower at a time here. And for the sake of keeping the oil hot, we're gonna close the grill up. So just kind of giving everything a turn now. Getting a little bit of browning going on. It needs a little bit more time. Let's close it back up. All right guys, that first batch it's doing just fine, but I want it to go a little bit faster, so we're gonna improvise a little bit here. I think we can get a little bit more heat out of our charcoal down there if we go ahead and get rid of that plate on the slow roller. So we're gonna open this up direct and finish frying off the rest of our cauliflower. All right, so that should really open the heat up now. Let's let the oil come back up to heat before we start the next round. All right, so we've got hot oil again. We're gonna fill this thing back up with our cauliflower. And no matter what you're cooking on, you just wanna make sure that you've got good access to some heat. You could be doing this on the range inside. You could be doing this on your Yoder pellet grill with the door open directly over the flame. Even on a gas grill on the side burner, whatever works best for you. All right, so let's show you what we're kind of looking for when we're looking at doneness. You see this side, which didn't have any color on it before, it's really got that crispiness and that browning going. That's what we're looking for, and it shouldn't take more than four or five minutes. That's another beautiful example there. So we'll continue to check these and transfer them to the wire rack to make sure that we don't have any grease that's just hanging on to these. We don't want them to be extra greasy. We want to let the buffalo sauce do all the clinging onto our cauliflower. So last thing we're gonna do is get these sauced up before we plate them, serve them alongside that ranch dressing that we made earlier. So I'm gonna transfer these from our rack where they've been draining and add the rest of that buffalo sauce that we used to dip these in originally. And we just wanna get these fully coated in the buffalo sauce. Now the buffalo sauce has had time to cool down, which is nice because when that cauliflower is hot, it kinda just wants to melt right off of it. But when the sauce is cool, it'll tack up to the outside of the cauliflower. So we're just gonna roll those around in the sauce now. Oh wow, love that buffalo sauce smell. Nothing like a little hot sauce hitting the nostrils there. Got a couple of stragglers here we're gonna add in. It's the last of our cauliflower coming out of the skillet. Top it off. Perfect. Very nicely coated there. Look at that. Just every little nook and cranny's got some sauce in it. Let's have a taste. Oh yeah. That's got a great little crunch on the outside. Mm. Buffalo sauce hits you first. No doubt about it. It's on the tongue. It's in your nose. It's in your sinus cavity. It's a perfect burn. The second thing I noticed though, smoke. We're picking up the smoke from that charcoal, from the apple wood. You can definitely tell that this wasn't just thrown into a fryer. There's a lot more complexity to it than that. So this is great for a party. Put it all on one big platter if you like. Let people just put a little bit on their plate here. 
And one last thing here to finish this off, I love to add some blue cheese crumbles. You know, when it comes to buffalo wings, I'm a blue cheese sauce guy with my wings. I love the ranch as well, but this way we kind of get the best of both worlds. All right, I'm gonna do one more bite with everything now. Oh yeah, that's where it's at. Man, that ranch is so fresh. All of those herbs in there, all that green stuff, and then the funkiness from the blue cheese. I love it. I gotta have it every time. I don't even miss the protein. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue or barbecue legends are made.